So it's time to make a change. When I moved into this house and it came with a double garage, I was the happiest person in the world. Going from a mid-terrace house to having a double garage for all my stuff was the best thing ever. I quickly learned that you can have double the room, you can have triple the room, you can have quadruple the room, but you're gonna fill it with crap. So here's my attempt to bring a little more order to my life. First thing though, I've got to break a hell of a lot of eggs before I can make my omelette. All this stuff on the back wall has got to come down, that racking's got to be moved, and my plan here is to have a modular system on the back wall, and I'm gonna do that by creating some French cleats. The reason I wanted to go with French cleats is because over the last year or so, as I've been building up my tools and my working area, everything I've built has not lasted because quickly I get better kit or I change kit or kit breaks. So I wanna have something that I can change when I need to change and nothing too permanent. First things first though, I've gotta clear all this crap. So I was lucky enough recently to be given all these lengths of wood that you saw in the start of the video. The reason I was given them is they're not really fit for purpose or at least the purpose they were bought for. Quite a lot of them are warped, bowed, I've got knot holes in. So whilst this isn't pallet wood, it wasn't going to be used. Some of it's treated, some of it's not. But all I'm doing here is I'm running them through the table saw that I've set to 45 degrees to give me my wedge for my French cleat. As you can see, this wood is wobbling all over the place. I really do need a new table saw. And the clamps that you see in the foreground, I'm hoping that's gonna make me the money to get one of those. I'm gonna frame this system on either side using these two lengths of timber. They are different colors. They're a bit warped, they're a bit bowed, but I'm gonna do this the hard way with the left-hand side one before I realize that there is a much, much easier way to do it with the right-hand side. So the one you see me working on at the minute, I'm gonna mark out where I want the screws to fall in terms of the breeze blocks. Then I'm gonna drill those holes, then I'm gonna to have to find a way to mark through those holes, then I'm gonna to have to drill the breeze blocks, then I'm gonna to have to put the plugs in and hope everything lines up perfectly. That is the hard way to do it and I would not recommend that. The reason I wouldn't recommend that is because it takes a lot of extra steps. For both variations, you've got to pre-drill the wood, countersink those screws, then it's to find in where it's going to fall on the wall that's the problem. So here you can see I'm doing that by just putting a screw through, it's shorter than the length of timber and I'm just going to hammer that in until it leaves a mark on the breeze block. I didn't have a nail or anything that was long enough to go through on hand, but the trouble with this is, as you drill each hole into the breeze block, there's a little bit of wobble on the SDS drill and things just don't line up quite perfectly. And what you'll quite often do is miss the raw plug. It's great and it's worked for me before, but I had an idea and thought of a better way. Unfortunately for you, you don't get to see that great idea. But it was fundamentally the same. With each length of wood, I marked the holes I was going to drill, drilled through with a wood bit, and then I countersunk where these screws were going to sit. The difference is I didn't have to do any pre-drilling into that breeze block wall. 
I used something called concrete screws, which I had left over from fitting our treble glazing earlier this year. These things are amazing. They self-drive straight through the concrete and they are just bomb proof. And it meant that the right hand side was much stronger than the left hand side. There was zero wobble and I would say much less than half the effort. So instead of watching the piece of footage where I show you a great method, I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the French cleats themselves. So for each one I've marked where I want the screw to fall. Now this is on the rear side of the cleat, the part that will go against the wall. The reason I'm drilling on this side is because I want those screw holes to fall exactly where they need to be. They cannot come through on that angled piece of wood at all. So what I'll do is I'll drill through each one of these on the rear side, then I'll flip it over, then I'll add my countersink. Now I'm not cruel enough to make you watch footage of me attaching these batons to the wall. These cleats are going straight against the wall, I'm going to line them up with my spirit level and then I'm going to use those concrete screws to attach them straight to the wall. I'll skip that part and get to the next part, which you get to watch me screw up basically. So I wanted this project to be a little bit fancier than just some French cleats on a wall, so I'm going to add a little bit of lighting. Especially now I'm getting into this YouTube gig, I wanted a bit of a background, you know, like all the professionals have. So I'm going to make a bit of a shelf and I'm going to have some hidden lighting up on top. So all I'm doing here is using some mould pallet boards and measuring them to the length, or the width I should say, of my French cleats and I'm going to cut them down. Like I said, I'm going to cut them down, that's why, oh yeah, everybody needs to know how to cut down a length of wood. Yep, safety goggles, well done, they don't really fit your face, your whole lower eyes exposed, but still, show them anyway. Look at that, in case you didn't know how to cut the end of a piece of wood. And now you get to see me work with a table that is far too small for the project that I'm doing. You do, however, get to see my latest purchase. Because I made a little bit of money off my last project, I decided to invest it back into my woodworking. So instead of just using B&Q own brand PVA glue, looky what I've got. And I'm feeling really proud of myself at this point. Look, <laughs> next level. So after filling up my brand new glue squeezy thing with my new expensive wood glue, I was all ready to go. Except I really wasn't. And this bit, although it doesn't look like it, caused me quite a bit of frustration. Top goes on. Little silicon thing comes off, ready to squeeze the glue. Go on, really, just really squeeze it. Squeeze it more. That's it, squeeze it more, then let a bit of air in, then squeeze it, let's see what happens. No, yep, look around all sides, are there any instructions on it? No, no, go on, squeeze again. No, nope. still nothing. I know, oh no, there's no seal inside. I don't know, just look at it a bit, see if you can figure it out. No, nope, that don't twist, squeeze, go on. I'm not going to make you watch all the footage. This went on for about five minutes before I realised that you need to cut the end off the nozzle because the nozzle is sealed and the glue doesn't come out. And unfortunately, my brain didn't know that for quite some time. Anyway, now that drama's over with, I got to gluing up the shelf. I'm calling it a shelf, nothing's ever going to sit on it, but it's basically just a framework to hide some of the lighting that I'm going to use. So all I'm doing is I'm gluing those boards together and then I'm brad nailing them. Like I say, nothing's going to sit on this, it doesn't have to be strong, I don't need screws. All I'm looking for is a frame that's going to sit so high up that nothing is ever going to touch it. It's at this point I want to slow down the video a little bit and I want to try some audience engagement. I want you to look really carefully and see if you can spot what I'm about to do wrong. If you can spot it before I actually do it, write it down in the comments. And please feel free to tell me what an absolute amateur I am. It was at this point 
he truly realized what an idiot he is. And like his motto is, he really does not know what he's doing. Fortunately, tight bond is fast setting, but not too fast setting. A bit of hammer work, a bit of prying. I undid that, re-glued it, re-nailed it, put the shelf all together, and then the next step was fixing the lighting, which is actually really straightforward. So I got this LED lighting strip from Amazon for about 20 quid about a year ago when we first moved in and the idea was it was going to go under the kitchen cabinets but with toasters, air fryers, alexas and all the other things we haven't got the plug sockets and I didn't want a big gang of them on the wall so after really wrestling to peel the backing off this thing is self adhesive however I've used this in my van conversion and I don't trust it one bit so all I do to remedy this is add little dots of super glue every once in a while and then spray the wood itself with activator and then that just holds everything in place. Even if the adhesive fails, it's got that super glue and it's never gonna go very far. So all I do is I work my way around, weave in this around the inside of the board. Now this isn't designed to provide my workshop with any extra light really, it's just so that I look goddamn fancy. God damn fancy. No, wait. God damn fancy. Is that it? I've been watching Suits recently. I'm pretty much Harvey Specter of the amateur woodworking world. Anyway. Again, I'm not going to make you watch all of this. I'm sticking something onto something and then I'm going to put it up and it's going to be stuck. Moving on. Once the shelf, it's not a shelf, definitely not a shelf, once the thing is in place, all I do is I screw it straight into the rafters above. It doesn't really need it, I just don't really like that bow in the middle because it's made out of cheap wood, only glued and brad nailed together. But once it's screwed, I'm all good to go. Time to give this thing a test run. It's not plugged in, you muppet. Plug it in, oh no, you lost your glasses. Anyway. Look at that. <laughs> Honestly, what an absolute success. I have achieved absolutely nothing other than destroying my garage. But look at those flashing lights. So now I've got my French cleat system, you're probably wondering what I'm going to do with it. Well, I've quickly knocked together one of my modules. I'm calling these modules because I plan on having interchangeable different modules that as time goes on, I progress, I change my tools, I'll be able to hang them up, take them down, switch them out. And this is the first one. I have not shown you how to make this because it's really straightforward. It's just some blocks of pallet wood and it's got an old magnetic knife block on it, couple of nails to hold things in place. This is gonna house my chisels, my saw and a couple of rulers but in future I am going to show you how to make a few of these different modules when they're a little bit more intricate than this. If you have got anything out of this video at all please hit me up with a like or a subscribe it really does help my channel I promise you that. Thank you for having the patience for sticking with this Muppet until the end of the video. Much appreciated. Take care. Bye bye. sweep up and call this workshop finished. Maybe not. <laughs>